Zero, and I am back again tonight with another review. Tonight we have something very exciting, a brand new yet to be released amplifier. This is called the Aegis. So stick around, kick back, relax, and let's get right into this. All right, so before we get started, let me take you on a brief tour of the front and back of the Aegis. The front of the Aegis is pretty basic. You've got your power switch on the left. You've got your volume knob on the right, and then the quarter inch jack far right. Up top, you've got your five sockets. Then around back, you've got your RCA plugs on the left. You have your output impedance switch, and then where your power cable goes. So that is the Aegis from three of the four sides and not turn it upside down. Okay, so let's get into this. What is the Aegis? Well, first of all, this is a transformer coupled amp. It's not an OTL. And it has some very interesting um, design qualities involved in it, which I'll get to in a bit. But before that, let me give you a little background on what's going on with this amplifier. So the Aegis has been designed and built by a member on HeadFi named Lord Gwen, otherwise known as Keenan. Now that name may sound familiar to you. If you're a member on HeadFi, you've probably seen him around the various threads. I also did another review about a year ago of his OTL design called the Airmed. And in that video, I raved about the Airmed. I liked it so much, I sold my Glenn OTL and bought an Airmed. Unfortunately, due to personal circumstances with his job not allowing him time to build amps full time, only six Airmeds were ever built. And if you've been to a Can Jam in SoCal and been to the ZMF booth, Zach had an Air Mid at Can Jam. He also had the Aegis at Can Jam. So if you were at SoCal Can Jam and you went to the ZMF booth, there's a good chance you might have heard this amp already. So in my review of the Air Mid, I talked about it's amazing silence, like a tomb, just quiet. And I'm talking about placing the amp about three feet away from a router and a modem, and still dead silence. I also talked about the massive soundstage of the Air Med. I also talked about the incredible clarity, transparency of the Air Mid. I also talked about the dynamics of the Air Mid. And then finally, I wrapped up the Air Mid review by saying, run, don't walk, and contact Lord Gwynn and get your order in. A few of you did, but most of you did not. And like I said, there's only six Air Mids out there in total. So this brings us to the Aegis. Like the Air Mid, it shares a lot of the same qualities. The, the Lord Gwynn DNA is all over this amplifier. You can tell that they were built by the same guy. A lot of the same characteristics. First of all, background is blacker than my shirt. This thing is dead quiet at full blast next to a modem. No music playing. There isn't even a slight hum or buzz. There is just silence. It's, it's friggin' amazing. This thing has a ginormous stage. Bigger, dare I say, than the Air Mid. I would also say not only is it bigger, but it gives you a more solid holographic helmet over your skull more so than the Air Mid does. It's also incredibly transparent, incredibly crystal clear. It's just 
like I said, you can tell the same guy that built the air mid built this. Now the tubes that I use for this review, up front we have a pair of RCA 6 SL7s, not N, L. In the back we have a pair of Mullard EL37s. And then on the rectifier over here, we have a Philips Mini Watt GZ34. The DAC I used is my Lampazator TRP. The headphones I used, let's see. The Verite open, the Verite closed, uh, the ZMF Atrium, the ZMF Auteur Classic, the ZMF Caldera, the Hi-Fi Man Susvara, the AKG K240 Sextets, the AKG K701s, uh, Sennheiser HD250, the 250 ohm version, and I think that's it. Now, Keenan was kind enough to provide me with some technical aspects, which are way above my pay grade. So I'm going to read it because I can't remember any of this stuff. But if you know something about amp building, this might make sense to you. Okay, so it is a transformer coupled amplifier like I already mentioned. The input stage is choke loaded. The output stage is a unique design cathode follower power stage. And as far as Keenan knows, it's the only headphone amp in existence that does this. And what that does, the benefit is um, low distortion, which works magnificently, and uh, low output impedance. Now, for the amp output impedance on the low gain, low output stage, it is a 5 ohm output impedance. So it's, you can drive any low impedance or planar headphone, planar headphone that you may have on the low. On the high, it goes up to roughly 17 ohms, which doesn't sound like quite a bit, but it works magnificently with ZMFs. And mentioning ZMFs, I should also mention that Keenan is a rabid ZMF fanboy. He basically designed this amp around ZMF headphones. And he included the impedance switch for the Caldera, aha. And then also there's no bypass capacitor from the output stage, which benefits in the clarity and the staging. The tube types that this amplifier can take for the input, which is up front, six SL7s. In the back, you can do any output triode strap pentode, which would be the EL34, the EL37, the 6B6, the 6L6, the KT66, the KT77, or the KT88. And then for the rectifier over here, it is the 2.8 type of rectifier, which would be the 5R4, the 5V4, or the 5AR4. All right, now that I got all the technical stuff out of the way, let's talk about what everybody wants to know. Well, how does this thing sound? Okay, well, first of all, like I mentioned, this thing is dead quiet, like pitch black. Why is that important? Well, when you've got a hum, when you've got a buzz, that raises the noise flow floor, which decreases your sound stage, which lowers your dynamics. Noise is the bane of any headphone user's existence. This thing has none. None. Not even a little bit. None. The dynamics of the Aegis are off the charts. And it manifests itself in different ways. With the Caldera, it made the Caldera just punch and kick like a mule. With the Verite Open, it was a little bit different. With the Verite Open, suddenly it turned that headphone into a sub-bass monster. It was like unbelievable. With the VC, it manifested itself in the mid-bass. I've never heard the VC hit harder on any amp, including the Air Mid, including the Glen OTL, 
than it does on the Aegis. Like I said before, the staging is next, it's next level. It's bigger than the Airmid, which I know not many people have, have heard the Airmid, so it's hard to give you a good reference point. I sold my Glen primarily because I'm a soundstage junkie, and the Airmid just staged much better than the Glen did. The Aegis stages better than the Airmed. It's like... It's otherworldly. The mids on this amp are very interesting. And the reason I used and settled on this roll, to my ears and in my chain, this was the roll that had the most recessed mids. Some of the other tubes I used brought the mid so forward, it was really fantastic with the VC and the VO and on the uh, Caldera. With the uh, Autour Classic and the Atrium, it was, for my ears, it was a little bit too much of a good thing with some other tubes in there. But with these tubes, problem solved. Also, what I noticed is that if you use the Aegis on its low impedance output, it tames down the bass a little bit and tames down the mids a little bit on dynamic drivers EMS. So if you've got some tubes in there and it's a little bit too mid forward on the Atrium, flip it over to the low impedance output, problem solved. With the Sennheiser HD250, which is a criminally unknown headphone, um, I've never heard it sound better. And that's saying something because the Glenn OTL was a magical pairing with the HD250. The Air Mid was a step up from that, and this bested the Air Mid yet again with the HD250. Now, as far as the Susvara goes, um, I didn't think this amp would have the balls to drive the Susvara because the Susvara is incredibly difficult to drive, as you probably know, with an 83 or an 81 sensitivity, something ridiculous like that. The Aegis drove it and drove it well. We're not talking about sibilant. We're not talking about bass light. It was very punchy. Fantastic sub bass. The only caveat was you had to have it cranked up pretty high. You didn't have a whole lot of wiggle room before you hit max volume. But if you have a Susvara and you want to drive it off a tube amp, this thing does, does it fantastic. As far as 600 ohm uh, headphones, my AKG K240 Sextets or Power Hogs. It is a 600 home uh, headphone with a 91 sensitivity, I believe. And similar to the Susvara, I had to crank it up quite loud, not quite as high as uh, the Susvara, uh, to get it to a comfortable, fun listening level. I listen to loud music. I'm, it's just me. <laughs> but um, same story, man. It just it drove the hell out of the uh, Sextets. Then I dropped it over into the low output impedance and tried the K701. Same story. Fantastic. Plenty of dynamics. Fantastic stage. Just there wasn't a headphone that I threw at it that this amp didn't kick its ass. It was brilliant. The clarity is, is fantastic on the Aegis. I mean, it's, it's so revealing, yet incredibly musical. This isn't a sterile, dry-sounding amplifier. It also is fairly receptive to tube rolling. Like I mentioned, it isn't plug them in and be done with it. If you want to roll, you want to dial in your, your preferred sound. When you roll the tubes, it makes a pretty significant difference. Now, there are a couple things that I would suggest to Keenan that he addresses before this amplifier reaches its final form. Um, the first would be the power socket in the back. It's a little too small 
for my upgraded power cables, of which I have three. So I tried to use them and they wouldn't fit. The, the socket is too small. Um, so perhaps Keenan can go back to the one that he used on the air mid because that works with my power cables. The other thing um, that I would probably change, and this is just nitpicking at this point, is I would probably change the color of the jack to silver or, a, or white or a contrasted color because I listen in the dark and I don't see well. And so for me, trying to plug in my headphones, I'm having to feel around for it. I don't feel like turning on the lights. So other than that, the power cord thing and the color of the input for the headphone, that's all, that's all the negative things I have to say about this amplifier. So how do you get this amp? This is where it's fun. Okay, so as of right now, which is November 2nd, 2022, the only way that you can get this amplifier is to contact Lord Gwyn on his um, do-it-yourself thread or as a private message on HeadFi, and I'll post the links to all that stuff in the description uh, of the video. This amp isn't ready to be sold yet. It's going to be ready in about two to three months. But here's the kicker. You got to build it yourself. Now, before you turn off the video and say, well, screw that, Keenan has been very, very careful in its design to make this amplifier very simple to build. He says, if you can build a bottle head crack, you can build this. Very easy to do. He did all the hard work himself to make it simple. Now, for somebody like me, as blind as a bat, I couldn't do it. But maybe your Uncle Tommy or Uncle Freddie knows how to uh, solder. There's not a tremendous amount of soldering going on, very little point to point. Easy to build. Now, there are premium parts in this amplifier. So just in parts, it's in the ballpark of around $2,000 just in parts. And if you were to buy this pre-made commercially by you name your favorite headphone amp designer, I don't even wanna know how much that amp would cost. Because based on the way this thing sounds, this is probably the best amplifier I've ever heard. 4,000, 5,000, 7,000, 8,000, I have no clue. 10,000 maybe, I mean this thing is brilliant sounding. Granted $2,000 is not pocket change and I understand that um, a DIY project is a little bit daunting to some of you perhaps, but I guarantee you, you are not going to find another headphone amp on the planet for $2,000 that's going to come anywhere close to where this headphone amp sounds. It, it's, it's fantastic. And if you own ZMFs, as I said, Keenan himself is a ZMF fanatic. He designed this amp for ZMFs. And in the amp thread, which I will post this video in the ZMF amp thread that I started a few weeks ago, a lot of people are, you know, were wondering, what am I going to use for the caldera? Because my OTL ain't going to cut it. Here's your answer. It rocks with, with all the ZMF dynamics, and it just explodes the caldera stage. It is, it just... If you go back to my Caldera review, I talk about how it really got pushed into the dynamic driver side of things with the technicalities of a planer. And I was using this amp. This amp just takes the stage of Caldera, just goes 
Poof. And then when you use the Sosvara, it's it's absurd. I was listening to this amp right before I filmed this, and I was listening to some of my trance music uh, with the Sosvara and the Aegis, and it, it, it was a psychedelic experience. I'm just just sound coming from everywhere and tight, hard hitting bass, tight, deep diving sub bass. This amp just killed it with the Susmar. So Keenan is now two for two uh, as far as blowing my mind with his amplifiers. I have a feeling that in 20 or 30 years, when Keenan decides he's going to become a full-time amp builder, this amp's going to be a collector's item because, I mean, he's the dude is just a natural-born amp builder. His stuff is amazing. So I would highly recommend that you jump on to HeadFi, drop Lord Gwen a private message, and find out for yourself how to get your hands on this amplifier. He is going to provide everyone with the sources that you're going to need from the transformers all the way to the chassis, everything. He's going to provide all of the information on how you can get everything that you need for this amp to be built. And the best thing about it, he's not charging. The $2,000 is what you're going to spend on parts. He is giving the plans for this amp away absolutely free. I would like to thank Keenan uh, for being kind enough to ship this out to me. Uh, the Aegis is, in my opinion, a must-have if you plan on owning a caldera and you have some high impedance dynamic driver headphones this thing manhandles both it is just brilliant like i said before if you have a susvara which is probably along with the abyss and the he6 the hardest headphones on the planet to drive this one handles the susvara as well so this has been monster zero uh, with the Aegis. Do it this time, guys. I'm telling you, get in line, contact Keenan, get your stuff together, and build this amp. I promise you, you will not be sorry. Talk to you guys later.